welcome everybody, welcome to another video. In this video I'll be doing an update on my install Pop! OS and Windows in a dual boot configuration. Um, the reason why I'm doing a update is because I noticed I made some mistakes in my previous video. This, the, the, the method I used still works, but a couple of people pointed out that it can be done easier and I agree. So I will be putting up a redirect on my old video. I'm not going to remove my old video because a lot of people will probably end up on that video. Um, you know, through through YouTube search, they probably will end up on that video. And but I will you know, redirect them uh, to this video. And if you got redirected, then welcome. I will uh, go on with the video in just a second here. But I just wanted to clarify a few things. Um, what I'm not going to do it this time is I'm not going to use partition wizard because a lot of people were having problems with partition wizard and somebody cleverly pointed out in the video that it's actually just a lot easier to just create a new EFI partition and actually that was something I did not even know that you could have multiple EFI partitions I thought it was like a boot sector or something like that but apparently you can have multiple EFI partitions so we're gonna do just that so I've already uh, booted up Pop OS from the USB stick from the installation uh, from the installation stick. If you do not have one yet, uh, here is a video of mine uh, showing you how to create a, a bootable USB stick for Pop OS the right way because there are wrong ways to do it as well. The right way is to use the Belina Etcher, uh, but if you do not have one yet, you can definitely get one over here. You can get you can see how to do that. Uh, but if you have one already, then just boot up your USB stick from uh, from the BIOS uh, boot menu, boot up the USB stick and you'll get in this menu over here. You'll be you'll probably be um, familiar with this one. So this will be the Pop! OS installation menu you first encounter. So it will ask you to uh, choose your language. We're going to choose just USA, uh, also US, default settings over here. And right now it's going to ask us whether we want to do a clean install or we want to do a custom install. We're going to choose custom install. We're going to go to custom advanced. And this will load up a screen that shows all of our drives over here. And then we want to make sure that we select the one that we want to put uh, Ubuntu, uh, excuse me, Pop! OS on top of. So actually this is going to be the Samsung SSD, the 970 EVO over here. and First of all, we want to modify the partitions over here. So just go ahead and load up Gparted and just make sure that you select the drive over here you want to use. So uh, in my case, it's the NVMe. If, you do not, if you're not sure which one, but you know which drive you're using uh, for Windows and you want to put Pop! OS on the same drive as Windows, then just make sure that you select the right drive. If you want to put Pop! OS on a different drive, then actually you can just use that drive and uh, select the first value over there. Just do a clean installation and put Pop! OS on that drive. You won't need to follow this guide. So just, you can go along and uh, if you go back over here, you can just choose uh, the uh, clean install installation, but then make sure that you select the right drive, okay? But in this case, we are going into a scenario where we're using the scenario where we have one disk and on that one disk, we want to split up the partitions. We want one partition to be for Windows and one partition to be for, for Pop! OS. So we're going to select uh, modify partitions over here and then within Gparted, the make sure you select the right drive. If you're not sure which one it is, uh, go ahead and unplug all your other drives because it's uh, it's much safer to do it that way so that you only have like one drive over here so you don't have to choose. So once you are in the Gparted menu you can go ahead and select the NTFS partition which is the largest one uh, most likely and um, the other ones will probably be labeled recovery and the other one will probably have no name this is the AVI partition we're not going to use that one uh, so we want to shrink this in size so right click it and do the resize move option here and then we can move the slider to the left and make it a little bit smaller so we're gonna have let's say 
Yeah, that should be about enough. You can choose how much space is uh, you you, gi you give to Popovas, but since Popovas is something they'll probably just be using for uh, for you know, I won't be doing a lot of uh, I won't be installing a lot of software on there, and most of my games are shared on a drive with Windows, so uh, I'm gonna give it about you know 54 uh, megabytes should be more than enough. So just click the resize move option here. And that will have about the the size you removed will be uh, the size that will be unallocated. So first of all, we want to create a new partition. We want to call that partition um, a primary partition. We want to we want to sh shrink that in size. We want to do about 512 megabytes, something like that. Um, and then the file system. Uh, can be ext4. Let's go ahead and add that, and then we're going to do a new partition, which is going to be the primary partition, and we want to uh, we want to allow about 4,096 free space following instead of free space uh, free space preceding. We want to we want to leave some of that space uh, following, so like that. This is actually for to create the swap partition. So we're going to do new, and then we're going to choose Linux swap as a partition. We want to add that. And then we want to apply all the operations. Are you sure you want to apply all the pending operations? Yes, you want to apply that. There are different steps you can take. You can go ahead and create uh, a four gig partition first and set the Linux swap partition as the first one and then create the one but this is just the way I like to do things. Okay so go ahead and close that and then wait a couple of seconds for the settings to be visible here for the changes to be visible here. Okay so go ahead and select use this partition and we want to make sure that this one is the boot partition the first one the first one we created will be the boot partition, which is about 500 megabytes. The second one we created will be the root partition. We don't have to format that because we already have one. And the last partition, you want to click that, and then we want to use the partition. We want to make sure that it's a swap partition. So go ahead and click Erase and Install. And now we just wait for the magic to happen. So the installer has finished PopOS and is installed alongside Windows. Go ahead and restart the device and normally by default uh, PopOS, well actually not by default in my case at least, in my case uh, PopOS started up immediately but I've had some times where PopOS didn't start and my Windows installation started instead so go ahead into your BIOS or into your boot menu of your BIOS and select PopOS as a first uh, boot option there. Uh, just go ahead and restart the device now. Let's go ahead and do that. So of course this is the PopOS installation menu we'll get, we'll get first. So just go ahead and click next over here. Select your keyboard layout. Choose whatever privacy settings you want. Choose your time zone. And then you can connect some online services here if you want to. We're going to gonna go ahead and skip that. I'm just going to enter my credentials over here real quick and then enter a password. Sorry for shaking the camera here. It's not easy to do this with one hand. There we go. And go ahead and click Next. And then we can go ahead and start using PopOS. So, okay, so everything seems to work. So, seems that Firefox does boot up easily. Uh, let's go ahead and restart the system now and let's go ahead and start up our boot menu over here I'm running a gigabyte motherboard so in my case it is a uh, in my case it's uh, F12 so we see that we have the option to uh, choose either boot manager Windows boot manager up or pop OS so let's go ahead and select our Windows boot manager here 
and see if that still works. That seems to be no problem. Let's go ahead and restart the system here again. Let's see if we can also boot into Pop OS. So let's go ahead and select Pop OS 19.10. And what do you know? That works too. Let's go ahead and log in here. Boom, seems to work just fine. So this was just a quick video of me showing you guys how to do a dual boot with Pop! OS the right way or the easy way or the improved way or whatever you want to call it. This is uh, my video. I will title this video uh, how to dual boot Windows 10 and Pop! OS Definitive Edition. Something like that because I like Age of Empires and I, I've been playing that game for a while now. So I'll name the video that. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like in the or uh, leave a like and a comment below. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.